Hi everybody and welcome back. Uh, my name is Allie and this is a continuation of my Quilting 101 series. So last time I talked a whole lot about the different materials and stuff that we're using as well as the tools. So today I'm actually going to show you how these things come together to create our quilt blocks. So what I mean by this of course is that we're not talking about one continuous piece of fabric that just gets cut up and sewn. What I've done is I've actually used um, some pre-cut things. Again, like I said last time, I am lazy, and so this helps me out quite a bit. Um, and what I am doing is I've cut them into different shapes as well to create sections. So in different kinds of quilting, these can be different sizes. We can be talking about like a six inch, bleh, six inch square, or a nine inch square, or even a foot by foot square, kind of like a big thing. So today, um, we're not really going by those traditional sizes, but instead we're using these pre-cut shapes and some different sewing techniques to get them to look like flowers. So with that, let's head over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how they come together. Okay, so here we are back at my sewing machine. So if you guys remember, last time I had some of these yellow charm squares. As you can see, I've cut them much shorter, so they are only about two inches square now, okay? And then I have some of these little bitty green squares for my green strips of fabric, okay? And then I still have some of these full size charm squares as well. So these are the ones that are five inches by five inches, okay? So the thing about all of these is that we have to attach, here, let me scoot stuff out of the way. We have to attach one yellow square in one corner, and then we need three green squares in each of the other corners. So that's one, two, and then three. Okay, so of course me just putting it together like this is no good. It's going to be really uneven. So what I am going to do actually is I am going to use a disappearing ink pen. I know that was kind of goofy. I just get really excited about these. So functionally what this is, is it's water and air soluble ink. This is a fancy marker that you can get at a fabric store. Um, but if you just have like a pencil or chalk to work with at home, those are more than fine too. So basically we have to attach these to our uh, charm square here, diagonally here, okay? I've tried doing this freehand, it's awful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line to connect one corner to one corner. That seems nuts, but it really does help. I'm gonna do that for a bunch of these little squares, okay? Okay, so remember that this is only for one square. I still have a huge pile of these bad boys to go. So what I am going to do is I'm actually going to mark a bunch of these all at once. The ink does disappear, but it doesn't go right away. So what that means is that I'm basically going to use a, a cheat method that I'm also going to show you that's going to make this whole process go a little bit faster, okay? So I'm going to take a minute to mark up a bunch of these squares, and then we will uh, go through the cheating method as well. Okay, so now I have a bunch of these little green squares as well as some of these big yellow squares marked. So this is where I'm gonna to introduce to you guys kind of a cheating method that's really, really great. Because of course, ultimately this little bit of sewing, I'm lining up these corners here. So I'll have a nice flush edge, okay? Ultimately, this little bit of sewing can get really messy if you're doing the traditional stuff, right? So you would start, you'd back it up a little bit, you'd keep going, you'd back it up a little bit, and then you'd finish. Now, all of that thread, that extra thread that we use to secure those bits is going to really bulk up and get in your way. So what we should be doing here is we should be conserving that space instead, because ultimately we're going to have to sew these squares to other squares. It's going to be a lot. We'll go through all of it together, okay? So 
um, to kind of make this little bit of sewing easier and to make sure that we're using less thread, I'm gonna show you this method that I've been trying out. It's really, really great. I've also been using it to make a ton of fabric ties for the face masks. It's a lifesaver, seriously. Okay, so first of all, I have a scrap piece of fabric right here, okay? So my goal is to get this under my needle first. Now, you can't see any here, of course, but sometimes when you get your machine started, even on a really nice machine, like the one I have here at home, you're gonna end up with like just some kind of like gross, fluffy stuff on one side. Again, more thread bulked up out of the way, okay? So by starting on this scrap piece of fabric, we are able to sort of like just get rid of that problem at the outset, okay? The rest of our stitches will be nice and even. So I'm gonna just start sewing. It's just a scrap piece of fabric, so I don't have to care super much how it looks, okay? So, 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 all right. Now, you'll see here that I'm on the edge of my fabric. Now, normally what I would tell you in my sewing machine classes, my sewing machine certifications, is that we have to always keep fabric under our needle. However, the important thing about that is that like there's tension there that we need to maintain. So this cheat relies on that tension between your first piece of fabric, your scrap, and then the next piece of fabric that you're gonna sew. Let me show you what I mean. So I've got my stuff all lined up where I need it to be. I have my thread started and I'm just gonna keep sewing. I'm letting the feed dogs grab that next piece of fabric and I'm just gonna follow the line that I made, okay? Excellent. All right, so here is where I normally, right, would back it up, bring it forward again, and then cut it off. However, instead, take my next charm square, take my next yellow square right here, okay? I'm gonna line that up again. And because my thread has already started, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep sewing. So with that said, this is a really handy thing. You're not wasting all of the thread that you would if you were pulling it out and cutting it off constantly. But the thing here is that you have to make sure you don't accidentally sew your charm squares together, right? Okay, so let me do this. I'll do this for the yellow squares and I'll do this for the green squares as well. And uh, we'll see how it turns out. You'll also see over the course of this little speed up that I'm about to do, how I actually cut these apart as well, okay? Okay, here we go. I know that that was like only a little bit of content for today, but I don't want to make these videos too long. Uh, but yeah, that was how you actually put those teeny tiny little pieces together. So when I see you guys next time in this series, I'm going to talk about how you get rid of the excess fabric, the importance of pressing, and then how these blocks actually come together into one flower shaped block. It's going to be really cool and I'm really excited about it. Um, and as much as something like that can be cool. <laughs> Okay. All right. 
Thank you very much once again for joining me. Please be sure to check out dclibrary.org slash library at home for ebooks, audiobooks, puzzles, games, and a whole ton of resources for really cool stuff that the library is doing right now. Okay? All right. With that said, I will see you guys next time. All right. Thanks. <laughs>